apply for you. So, in other words, you can give people statistics. You can say that we have this many borrowers who live in this township or this village, or we checked out this many items to people who lived in this area, but you can't give them the list of names of who has cars or who uses the library from, from a certain area. Mm. You can say how many people checked out this particular title, but you can't tell them who did. Mm. You can say, how, you know, so it's, you can give them number stuff, but not names, not identities. Uh, personnel records. You know, if your files are probably, you've got similar stuff to ours. Uh, in Winifox files, we've got everyone's social security number. Because we do direct deposit, we have everyone's bank information. Uh, yeah, those are public records, but that doesn't mean that anyone can come in and ask to see those files. That is excluded. Uh, notes, drafts, things prepared for staff use. Uh, if you're like me, when I'm putting together a presentation, I go through multiple versions of it. As I'm preparing the Winifox budget, I go through multiple versions of the budget. And people don't need to see all those preliminary drafts and versions. It's only the, the final one, which is an actual record and is, is for public view. But any of this could be a court uh, court order if if, uh, if the judge to issue it. Yes, yeah, sure. So those notes and drafts that we're making when we're doing our budget, um, we're to keep them. I mean, I just routinely. Well, we're going to we're going to get into that. Okay. We are going to get into that. That's that's okay. Good question. Good question. <laughs> so you need to have basically two policies for your records. You, you, every government body is directed to have a public records policy that says who the 